Hello guys, welcome back and welcome for the first time. Today we're going to talk about the extension floor, all the correct layers, the entire build up all the way up to the screen. My thumbnail is shouting builders don't do this and I will get into that in a while. In the meantime, let's quickly talk about the floor. In this case, our subsurface is really good. We have about 300 mil of solid hardcore already on the floor and that is all the bricks are left over from demolition. We crushed them with a sledgehammer and they created really nice and hard floor. On top of it, we are spreading type 1 hardcore and compressing it down with a wacker plate. Purpose of this layer is to solidify the floor and get rid of all the sharp edges from the bricks below. At this stage we are leveling using laser plus minus 10 mil to get it all as close as possible to the correct level. And this is the small area where we are going to create a new bathroom that also is going to be in the same level as the rest of the house. We left this stage of stripping the render until this moment because this dry render is a really nice um, material to spread over the hardcore. The next layer over all of this will be the sand. We're using sharp sand. Um, and that is mainly to take out any sharp edges from the hardcore that's already on top of this surface. The sand is preventing the next layer from getting damaged. The next layer is called DPM, stands for damp proving membrane. Obviously when it's damaged, it's no longer damp proving. So the sand creates smooth surface for the DPM to be laid on. And in here you can see very clearly the sand, now the DPM, and then the Celotex, 100 mil Celotex installation. As you see the DPM needs to be folded onto the wall all the way around everywhere. And you cut the excess out after the screening is completed.
Getting things ready for the underfloor heating. Let me flip the camera and show you. So I've marked off where the kitchen is gonna be with the masking tape. All of that's gonna be a kitchen. This is the underfloor heating pipe. And these are the two plumbers. Plumbers. Hello. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> cool. Yeah, just extending the Celotex to here. But from there down to here, we're gonna build another bathroom. But the underfloor thing is gonna come in here as well. And obviously, there, there's a bit, of, a bit of a garage there. Yeah, it's all exciting. It's all exciting. Right, so on top of this underfloor heating, we're going to lay down the screed around 90 mil fiber reinforced screening and at this stage I wanted to now refer back to my thumbnail and, um, and what I mean um, I am guilty of this myself because I've operated like this for years and the small builders like myself um, we all tend to think that the more we do ourselves the more money we get to keep in our pocket and it's true if you do this underfloor heating yourself, you get to keep the money. If you do the screeding yourself, you get to keep the money. So essentially, you are better off. Like, look, this is so easy. You just get the pipe, get those little plastic anchors, and you push them into the cellar stacks. There's no brainer there, you know. The system is just so easy to use. So, of course, you can do it, I can do it, and most people can do it. It only involves a little bit of maths, drawing some lines on the Celotex, plan how you're gonna run the pipes, and, and that's it. But the, the point I'm making here is that the more you do yourself on the project, the less of the projects you're going to do in a year. So, how many of extensions of this size can you do in a year? Um, okay, let's say three. Now, if you outsource plumbing work to a plumber, if you outsource electrical work to an electrician, if you outsource the screeding to the screeding guy, you will save so much more time. Your client will be a lot more happy that you finish the job very quickly. Making those savings, time savings, you will be able to fit one more project in the year and that will pay for everything, for all your plumbers, electricians, bricklayers and so on. I used to do the screeding by myself and let me explain the operation of doing the screeding. Mixing by a cement mixer is not an option, the quality of that screed would be rubbish. So we would order the volumetric lorry, the lorry would come and dump the gear on the drive and from there we would wheelbarrow it in. We're talking here about five people being involved in the procedure and you will never get that kind of effect. These guys have the rotating tool in the end, they polish the surface, so the surface of the screed is so much nicer, harder. As you walk on it later, it doesn't wear off, where my screed was very soft and brittle, and I, I knew I needed to improve on this. So we, we used to cover the, so the screed with self-leveling compound as soon as um, the screed was dry, just to protect it, and it shouldn't be like that. But just going back to this underflow heating, now, I've got a plumber to come and do it, and okay, he charges arm and a leg, I'll pay him, but he's the one to take responsibility for this. So anything that goes wrong, he is the one to fix it. And that's it. You're better off doing work in this way. L look at this um, screening guys. They proper geared up. They know what they're doing. It's two of them, not five of us, it's two of them. The mix that comes from this pump that you see there, it's constantly fresh and the quality material and that's what it matters. Now, I'll tell you how much these guys charged me. 65 square meters was the total area and we did it at um, 90 to 100 mil fiber reinforced screed and his charge was a thousand pounds. Now, I don't think that's expensive. This saved me a lot of grafting and provided me with a lot better final result. And it's the same with everything else. I am an excellent plasterer, but I don't plaster my own jobs anymore. 
I am a good plumber. I don't do plumbing on my jobs anymore. I know electrics inside out, yet I don't do the electrics myself. I get qualified people who will certify my work at the end and I can sleep knowing that nobody is getting electrocuted, flooded, the house won't fall down, etc. It took me years to come to this conclusion and I had to do it all by myself. But my advice to you, small builder, if you're watching this, is to create those contacts as you go with plumbers, electricians, roofers, bricklayers, and you name it, and use them as much as possible because that will give you better quality work and you will finish the project much faster. And this is it. We left it dry overnight, came back the next morning and it was good to go. The quality of the work is very satisfying. That's it then. I hope that I've explained the layers very well and you understand how it's all done. Thank you for watching. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to my channel and like the video. This will help the channel to grow. The next video will be about fitting the kitchen the Ren Nightmare Kitchen. <laughs> Look after yourself. Thank you again. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.